Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog. What a start that was. So, um, I was on the way to my locals to go to CX, trade a few bits in. There's some things I want to order which will form part of a future video. And on the way, of course, popped into my local charity shop and it was a very fruitful visit. As you would have seen, there was like a big Wii U bundle in there. Sorry, a Wii bundle in there. And... Uh, loads of Wii motes and stuff like that. Now the Wii motion controllers trading for a good uh, amount of money. They didn't want to split the peripherals up, but they did say that I could buy the game. So I was like, okay, great. Grab some games. I've not had time to work out the value in here, but there's some nice trading value. I'll be putting it on screen as and when I go through them. Uh, so the first couple of games we have here are the standard Wii Sports that you see everywhere, and not one you see as common in the cardboard sleeve at least, and that's Wii Sports Resort. Um, they do trade in for less in the cardboard sleeves, but well worth picking up for what was less than £2 each because, yeah, this cost me £10 for this whole bundle. So, yeah, I was happy with that. And then there's a couple of Guitar Hero games, which I did look up because the thing with Guitar Hero games is some are worth picking up, some aren't, and I don't know off by heart which ones are which, but Warriors of Rock and Metallica are both worth picking up. From what I remember, the sort of £5 trading on these each. Um, so, yeah, happy to grab those. And then I grabbed Super Smash Brothers. I mean, as a rule, any sort of first party Nintendo games. Speaking of which, from Smash Brothers, a standard that you see all the time, Mario Kart Wii, and the one you hope to see in a bundle like this, Super Mario Brothers Wii. So yeah, a really nice find with which to start the week, right? Some uh, staples that you often find in Wii bundles. And I've said this before, the Nintendo Wii is the unsung hero of charity shop hunters. I, without a doubt, have had the most CEX vouchers from Wii games. Anytime you see a Wii bundle, make sure you go through it because, yeah, the standard titles, your Wii Sports, your Mario Karts, um, these are just games that you see all the time and they're still well worth picking up, as are the Wii Motion controllers, should you be fortunate enough to be able to grab those. So with these, um, a couple of games that we found at the back end of last week. Yeah, we're going to have a nice little trade-in voucher to add to my total and... Yeah, after the fantastic find we had last week, we're continuing that form. So long may that continue with Charity Shop Hunts. There's loads to come on this week's vlog. We'll discuss more of that once we get back to the 3.0. But for now, let's go to the local CEX. People that contacted me this last week said they tried the same McDonald's hack. It's got to be done. Okay, before we get any further, I think it's time to tidy up. That is more like it. Let's kick off the vlog, shall we? 
Good morning! And uh, as you can see, the postman has been and this is going to be a vlog filled with parcels, unboxings, openings. Uh, there's a lot more where this came from. This is just the recent eBay purchases, I believe. There's also lots of gifts. There's also the biggest box I think I've ever had in this room. We'll get to that later on in the vlog. Uh, right, so where are we? Yesterday, uh, as you saw, I went to my local CEX. Didn't actually buy anything, but it was very much a case of job done. Uh, I did what I needed to do. I got my CEX vouchers. I've ordered some very tasty um, retro, so that'll be coming either on a vlog or a video very, very soon. Um, last night, I finally finished Spec Ops The Line. Um, I did a little mini review on the Ghetto Gang Discord, and it's one of the games that's hard to sort of review or say much about without spoiling it, and I think that was probably to the detriment of the sales of this game, and probably why I heard nobody talk about it until the price of it spiked recently with the issues with the music licensing. A very enjoyable game, not your standard sort of military shooter that there are a plethora of uh, in this era of gaming. Something very different, but again, it's hard to really say much about it without spoiling it. It's just one of them games you kind of just need to experience for yourself. It wasn't too long. I did this in about three or four sittings. I did it all on the medium difficulty setting. It did get a lot harder towards the end, but um, even though the game kept telling me basically that I'm crap at the game, it kept saying to me, do you want to adjust the difficulty setting? You know you're doing badly when the game keeps asking you that, right? But uh, I didn't. I stuck with it. Kept it on the medium difficulty setting. I'm glad I did so because it was just the right amount of challenge. Really enjoyed it. There's like four or five different endings as well. And the good thing about this is you can kind of do each one. I kind of finished it and then just reloaded the last um, little bit. It's not even a mission. It's like a cutscene, and you can make certain choices. So I was able to cycle through all the different endings and stuff. And if you are somebody that hunts gamer score, I think you get a different gamer score for each one. So you don't have to play through the game multiple times. But yeah, all I can say was a very enjoyable game. Um, I do think the price will eventually settle down on this one. But uh, yeah, definitely play through it if you get the opportunity. And that is number 10 of the year, right? Game number 10, which in theory sounds pretty good, right? Where are we now? In, in March, completed 10 games. But when you think I did nine in one day, <laughs> it kind of doesn't sound as good. Um, but I have played a lot of games since we did that like 24 hour challenge. I just haven't quite played them to the point of completion or I've got right to the end and I've not yet finished them. Also, um, the new Prince of Persia game has taken up a lot of my time. I'm still playing through that. But now I've finished Spec Ops Alive and I'll probably dedicate myself purely to playing through that. No distractions, right? Uh, I've got a big backlog. It'll cut me some slack. Um, right, okay, so before we get into all of this and what's coming up on the vlog, uh, now while I've got your attention is the perfect time to talk about the giveaway for these fantastic items here. So we've got the Neo Geo Pocket Colour in Stone Blue. And a copy of Metal Splug, Metal Splug, Metal Slug First Mission for the Neo Geo Pocket. Very quickly, for those that aren't aware, I found a bag on the floor at Leeds Retro Gaming Market, and inside the bag was these games. Um, and I basically put an appeal out to try and find the owner of these items. Eventually, managed to track down the owner, um, and the owner was gener generous enough to say to me um, after a conversation. Um, sort of I believe in good karma, let's give these to charity basically. So I'm going to do this for my charity which is um, Alzheimer's Research UK. Uh, we were fortunate enough to raise I think approximately £1,500 for them. When I built this room I did like a charity run where um, a lot of you people got involved and your names are actually on the foundations of this very floor. Um, so hopefully that link is still alive. If not I'll have to start a new one. But I'm going to put a link below um, which will just give in page. Now, all I would say is, if you can make a donation, a minimum of £5, but every £5 you give, you'll get a donation. For example, if you make it a £10 donation, you'll get two goes at it. And uh, yeah, just if you can, give generously. It's for a fantastic, fantastic cause, one which I've personally been affected by uh, on multiple occasions. And um, yeah, I think it's probably, I'm not an expert with Neo Geo, but it's probably like 300 quid's worth here, right? So... A great prize to be won as an incentive to give to what is an amazing charity that desperately needs your help. So massive shout out to everybody that's able to do so. Uh, when you give, just sort of give your name or whatever, or your YouTube name or whatever you want to give um, on the comments. And then obviously when I do the random draw, I can use said name um, to announce the winner. But yeah, get involved if you can. Right, so I should probably get through all of these, right? And like I say, these, <laughs> these are, I believe, just my recent eBay purchases. Um, there's going to be a common theme. You can probably guess what it is. Um, but yeah, let's let's just get into it, right? There's a lot to get through on this vlog, so let's just dive straight in. 
Envelope number one. What have we got? Okay, so this is a nice seal, and it's a real seal. I wasn't sure if it'd come as a real seal. Um, copy of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2. Um, yeah, it has got the PS3 seal. I've bought a few games that are quote-unquote sealed. Uh, PlayStation 3 Essentials from eBay, and they turn up clearly resealed. I don't care. I've just bought them because of the cheapest ones possible. So to get a genuine seal is nice. Um, so yeah, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2 sealed for... The PS3 Essentials Collection. Uh, next up, what we got here? This also looks to be sealed. <laughs> now this, um, I don't know. I don't think it's a genuine seal. But I don't care. So whatever, right? It's, <laughs> I mean, you'll see why. It's a dance star party. So this is definitely top of my backlog. I should be dancing around this room this evening to Dance Star Party. I did say on Wednesday's video, right, there's some very random, obscure games that got PS3 Essentials releases. I do not know what the criteria was. Um, yeah, just random. Maybe somebody can let me know. Can developers kind of buy those things? Or let's say, for example, the developer of Dance Star Party, are they able to say to Sony, we want an Essentials release? Basically to give it like a new lease of life in sales with a budget release. Um, so yeah, be interesting to know how that works. What's next? Okay, so I believe there's just, as it stands, three Lego games. Now there's a slew of Lego games on this era, right? Platform. So here we have Batman 3 Beyond Gotham. So I already had the first two Batman games. Um, I remember doing this hunt before for those three on the Wii U, so I now own these on the uh, PS3 as well. So yeah, that's that one ticked off the list. Next! Can you guess what console this is for? Okay, so this is one I was actually looking quite forward to because I, this is a game I might play. There's had a, it's had a recent uh, release, I think the third one in the series. Um, might be a second one, I'm not sure. Never played it. But this is Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Um, so yeah, don't really know much about these games. With the dragon defeated and your heart reclaimed, you must now face an ancient darkness that is mysteriously arisen from the depths of the Kasadi Sea. It looks to be... I don't know. Don't really know much about it. Is it like an action RPG? Very nice artwork though. It just sort of suits that red, right? Some of the artwork and colour palettes just go perfectly with a red border, and that's definitely one of them. So you're really happy to have that. Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. Next! Right, okay, so these two, I think I purposely put the bottom, because these are two that I ordered from abroad. I ordered these prior to Wednesday's video. I was hoping they were gonna arrive before the video, but they didn't. The uh, chap that saw me one of them blamed Brexit. So <laughs> must be Brexit as well. Right, let's have a look. Okay, so. Right, interesting. Interesting. So, this is Sports Champions 2, which in itself is anything but interesting, right? Uh, all as it should be. Complete essentials, disc and everything. The reason this is essential is... A <laughs> the reason this is interesting is because this is from the same seller that I pre-warned people about on Wednesday's video. Um, but again, the picture on the advertisement was of this game. So if you are gonna use the seller Momox, I think it is, um, and as I said on Wednesday's video, nothing against them, I'm not saying don't use them, but just be aware, if it says essentials in bracket, it doesn't mean you're getting an essential. Go on the photo, not on the listing, um, because they seemingly put essentials on every single listing. So on this occasion, I think this was the photo and it's worked out perfectly. Sports Champions 2, one to my knowledge that might not have got a UK release, but it was very cheap, um, very readily available, that one. Um, so yeah, I think, I think they're a German company. Momox. And then this one, this one worked out really well. So this was, these are two games in here that are quite expensive and difficult to find. Um, I've been after these for a little while. Now I found one of these on eBay and I just randomly started messaging the seller. He himself was a collector previously. Um, and I started messaging him about PS3 Essentials and sort of like, asking him about them 
it was surprising to him that people were collecting them now because he said that people used to avoid them. I said, yeah, I know, I know that story. And uh, so the one that I messaged him about, I believe was this one, Tekken Tag Tournament 2. So I already have uh, the Tekken Essential. Um, so when I saw this, I was able to negotiate with him and we came to a good price. And then I sort of said, oh, do you have any other um, essentials? And he said, I also have this one. And we managed to sort of reduce the cost because of combined postage. And he also did me a good deal. So I ended up getting a really good price to get both of these posted from, don't quote me. Yeah, the Netherlands. So I got both of these posted from the Netherlands for very little more than it would cost to buy them from CEX. Um, so really happy with that and really happy with them both because not only am I a fan of Tekken, but this is the last in this series, I think. And I earmarked this as being a difficult, expensive series to get the essentials for. The Dragon Ball Z range. So this is Ultimate Tenkaichi. And I think now I have three Dragon Ball games and I think I have all of them uh, for the essentials range. So yeah to get both of these from one seller. And uh, as I say, I was hoping this was gonna arrive for the Wednesday video and I was gonna sort of basically say, look, you never know where you're gonna find them. Just talk to people, right? And uh, yeah, it really worked out well for me because this is two that I really wanted. Um, yeah, very, very happy with that. And that's a nice pile, right? How many have we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's probably gonna be a lot more coming on this vlog as well as other things, right? Um, but I can't delay much longer because I'm going out. Today I am going out with a family. I'm going up to Canuck Way again. We're going to the Design Outlet Village, taking mini gato out. Going to go and get something to eat, do a bit of shopping. But whilst I'm there, obviously there's uh, Canuck CEX. There's also, hopefully if I've got time, the Litchfield CEX and charity shops on the way home. So you know, obviously I'm going to find uh, time to do a little bit of game hunting, right? So next time you see me, I'll be in Canuck. <laughs> Let's go. Okay, so we've made it to Canuck. Um, the CEX store is five minutes from the outlet, so I mean, when in Rome, right? Let's go see what the CEX store's got. Okay, so that was Canuck CEX. Some decent bits in there, but no retro are needed. Uh, no real PS3 essentials. There's that interesting shop just a couple doors down that I spoke about before. Um, you don't want me to film in there, so I obviously didn't try and film today. Um, I walked in and there is a bit of a PS3 section and there's quite a few essentials. So I was initially quite happy. Until I saw the prices, it's like, if you ever go hunting when you go abroad, you know, if you go to Spain or somewhere like that and you see old games at new prices, that's what it's like. You'll have PS3 Essentials that sell for £5 at CEX for like £25. Um, really bizarre shop. I don't know how he stays open, but each to their own, right? But uh, yeah, leaving Canuck empty-handed. 
can go to the outlet village now and then hopefully we'll have time to call in at Litchfield on the way back. I've had a lot of success in the Litchfield CEX previously. Okay, so designer outlet village done. Full stomach done. It's time for CX. Let's go. As you can see, we are back in the 3.0, and by my own standards, a strange start to the week, right? We've been to three CEX stores, and I haven't picked up a single item. We have, of course, returned some nice uh, vouchers, which will be put into good use on some retro. Um, but yeah, the only thing I saw in Litchfield CEX was a copy of Tekken Tag Tournament Essentials, which typically arrived yesterday. I'd never seen it before. Um, but that's just how it goes, right? There's no manuals that soften that blow a little bit. And guys, we're in no short supply of games and things to open. <laughs> we're going to get to all that. Um, but yeah, I did pick up one thing whilst I was in Litchfield. I've not had much luck in Litchfield charity shops recently. Um, I did pick up a cassette. I do like adding cassettes to my collection. We've got Smokey Robinson's uh, Tracks of My Tears. So like his greatest hits, some absolute bangers on here. The uh, Litchfield Oxfam always has a great music selection. Uh, but before we get into opening all of these games, let's open this big parcel here, shall we? Okay, so I've got no idea what happened to the audio with this clip, but obviously with it being an unboxing, I couldn't just sort of refilm it. This is something I've been waiting to implement into the 3.0 for months. And whilst I initially didn't know what this was when this huge box arrived at my home address, the note gave it away, right? <laughs> Man of many words, Kev. Um, so this is the new and revised Mega Drive Lite. Um, myself and Kev are both perfectionists when it comes to our game rooms and previously we just felt that the backing on the light itself was a little bit too big and it encroached on the LED light strip uh, above the Mega Drive collection. 
We've now revised the design so that the backing is exactly the same size as the Mega Drive games themselves. Um, so yeah, once I get through the world's largest amount of bubble wrap, you'll be able to see for yourself. And uh, I'm also going to flick it on so you can just once again see the uh, sign and the light in all its glory. Any second now once I stop gassing. There we go. Money shot. I mean, how amazing does that look, right? Um, so yeah, so now it's a case of me implementing this sign into the Mega Drive display. I've waited a long time to do this. Okay, so, I mean, that looks absolutely fantastic, right? As much as it looks good on camera, it looks, I'm gonna say 20 times better in real life, because obviously the camera's struggling a little bit to pick up the light in all its glory, but originally when I tried this out, I had it on the top row, but I think it actually looks better on the second row, sort of, you know, amalgamated in with everything. Um. Yeah, absolutely love it. And because of the new uh, redesign, I can actually allow the games to come slightly onto the backing. So that sticks out probably to about there. And again, that'll just allow me to get even more games on the shelf. Yeah, I'll try and have some photos as overlay so you guys can see a little bit of what I can see, but I absolutely love that. Massive, massive shout out to Kev. Ah, oh, I don't think I've got the superlatives. I mean, you can see it for yourselves. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. Game changer. Okay, so with the Sega Mega Drive wall having never looked better, what I really need to do now is do a little bit more rearranging. Make sure all the games are on display that I want on display. Also figure out what I'm going to do with the wire, which is currently protruding from the wall. However... I've got to fly out. It's been too long since we've done an Ikea trip. And uh, yeah, there's a couple of other little jobs I want to get done here in the 3.0 today. So we're going to fly to Ikea, probably grab something to eat while we're there, get what we need, get back, get on with these jobs, open the parcels. Yeah, there's, there's still a lot to do. So let's go. <laughs> Today be the day that I finally find a plant for the 3.0. Okay, so I'm in my old stomping ground of the Billy bookcase area. Um, nothing too exciting, I just want to grab a couple of shelves that I need. Uh, with recent changes to the sort of PlayStation area, the PS2 area, uh, I just need to grab a couple of shelves. So I'm going to do that. And there's one other thing I need to grab, which I'll uh, discuss when we get back. But, yeah, I think I've seen enough. I think I want another cinnamon bun, so <laughs> let's go. Okay, back from Ikea and <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's some stuff that needs opening. So, um, as soon as I got back, I rearranged the Mega Drive wall. So I made sure that the games I wanted forward facing also. And I also made sure that the sign was in exactly the right position. In terms of the wire itself, I'm going to get some sort of like, um, you know, the 
things that you use. I can't remember, I don't know the exact terminology, guys. I mean, if you watch the channel, you know I'm not a DIY expert, but the uh, little things that you use to sort of like knock wires in along skirting boards and stuff. I do have some, but I want the ones that are white so they sort of stand out less so. And I'll just sort of do those um, at the end of each shelf and then right down below. So it should pretty much be out of sight, out of mind in terms of the wire. And I absolutely love how that's looking. Um, but yeah, in terms of Ikea, bought a few bits. We'll get to that and the subsequent um, jobs that are gonna ensue from that here in the room shortly. But let's open some stuff. And we're gonna start with this one because this I think is the last of the eBay purchases that have arrived. Um, so let's see what's in here. Okay, so, um, I mean, it's seen better days, but it was very cheap, and I think it's just the box, to be honest. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's never a good sign when the game falls out, but it's in decent condition. Uh, so, yeah, PS3 Essential, and it's Killzone 3. There's also um, Killzone 2 on the Essential, so I need to grab that one. Uh, but this was really cheap from what I can remember. It says £2 on it, and I think it didn't cost me much more than that posted. So, uh, um, yeah, probably not a difficult one to find. Not an expensive game, clearly. But um, yeah, the PS3 Essentials tax has not reached uh, that seller just yet. So uh, yeah, nice addition. And now the rest of this stuff, I think, is sort of like some gifts, there's some trades, there's some things I've bought from Ghetto Gang members. Um, there's a lot of stuff here. I'm hoping a lot of it has notes because again, it, there's so much stuff it's hard to sort of remember off by heart, who sent what and things like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, the uh, Ghetto Gang Discord is popping off right now because there's so many people on there that are also on the um, PS3 Essentials journey and all the time it's like it's a real enabling group because literally I would say every day but more like hourly there's so many people on there that are out in their local CEX sending pictures of all the essentials and stuff and yeah um, there's a lot of temptation on that group shall we say but uh, it's all good man it's helping me with my collection uh, this first one doesn't feel like a game so we're going to get into this one first Okay, there is a note, so let's see what's on here. Hi Callum, really enjoy your videos and watching you game hunting. You have an amazing collection. I've just finished watching your game room build and I found these and thought they would look good in your collection. Keep up with the great videos from Morgan. Much respect Morgan, I appreciate that my friend. Um, let's see what's in here. Right, okay, so first things first, we've got a Dragon Ball Z Super Card game. Thank you very much, I'll pass them on to Little Man. These, wow, I've never seen these before. You may, well, from the videos you've seen, you know me well, Morgan. These are awesome. So, these are, um, like in the style of Lego minifigures, but they are God of War. So we've got the more modern adaptation of Kratos. And my favourite, right? Old school, badass Kratos. Pre-beard, pre-Nordic realm. These are amazing. Now I've seen a lot of different knockoff Lego figures over my time, right? But these are, not even probably, these are definitely the best ones I've ever seen. This one in particular, I absolutely love that. They've absolutely nailed it. Yeah, love that. Smashed it. Thank you very much, Morgan. I won't be able to put these in my army because I'm only putting like legitimate um, figures in the army, but these will find somewhere in this room for sure. These are definitely going to take pride of place somewhere. And uh, yeah, Mini Ghetto is going to have his eyes on these, so uh, <laughs> I have to keep these out of reach. Not Mini Ghetto, sorry. Ghetto Junior. Um, yeah, really, really like them. Thank you very much, Morgan. That's a great start. We'll pop them in here for now. I love that Ghost of Sparta one. Love that. Okay, so next. Let's go. Okay, so we have got a PS3 Essential. I remember having a conversation about this. But there's no note in here. Anything that I have notes, I will um, obviously write the information on the screen. This is Resistance Fall of Man. Um, this was the last Resistance game I needed, so absolutely fantastic. I have... I think there's Resistance Fall of Man, Resistance 2 and Resistance 3 on the PlayStation Essentials range. Never played a Resistance game, so by all means let me know in the comments if it's something I'm missing out on. Um, so yeah, 
this pile is growing. This pile, we're gonna have some PS3 Essentials montages come on this vlog, right? Okay, next. Uh huh. Now this one, I purchased from a Get A Gang member, as I was just talking about. So somebody was out and about, it was Wilson, I believe. And uh, I sent him some vouchers and some cash to uh, pick this one up for me. This is one that's sought after. I think this would have been one that is probably relatively sought after, even before um, the sort of surge in PS3 Essentials Hunters, because it's the it's the Star Wars The Force Unleashed, but it's the Ultimate Sith Edition. So this is like the all singing, all dancing edition. And I think that's something that's often overlooked, or maybe it's something that I don't discuss enough. Um, obviously, my primary um, thing with collecting these is number one, I've got the collector's disease. I love collecting stuff. Number two, I love the red spines. I love how they look. And I always say how I want that kind of definitive PS3 library. But quite often, um, these ones are the ones to buy because they often come with the DLC, the best version of the game on the disc itself. Um, and obviously, we all know with current trends in the news that a lot of these games and a lot of servers are shutting down and um, stores are closing down. So it's beneficial to have the game physically on the disc. And I think, I might be wrong, but I think... This is either only available on Essentials or you see it primarily as an Essential. But having said that, it's not an overly common game. And as you can see, it's £22. So it was a nice one to tick off the list and uh, much appreciated, my friend. Thank you very much for picking that one up for me. Uh, yeah, this is one that I did marked as um, a more expensive title that I wanted to add to the collection. Awesome. Another one for the list. Okay, so um, let's get into the big box, right? I've got a big box here. It's quite light. I think there's a couple of these, I'm not sure what's in them. So let's find out together. Okay, so this is comes straight from the uh, packaging supplies of CEX, right? Okay, there's a note. Yes, okay, so there's more of a story to this one. Um, so this has come from my friend Sylvan. Sylvan is a huge Mega Drive collector, like huge, very knowledgeable when it comes to Sega Mega Drive. He reached out to me, um, he saw that on a recent episode, I picked up this copy of Skeleton Crew. And um, as everybody quickly made me aware in the comments, it's in Dutch on the back, Dutch and French I believe. Um, not German. I was told it was German. I just relayed the information. That's my excuse. Um, but uh, Sylvan is such a level of collector that he said, look, I've got two copies uh, of the English version. I don't have that European one. So would you be interested to swap? I'll send you mine across first, check it out, and then send yours across. So very kind of him. So we now have the English uh, version of this, because obviously if you're only going to have one, I'd rather have the English one. So yeah, I'm going to then send him this one in the opposing direction. And uh, we'll both be able to gain something from our collection. So yeah, the, the com gaming community working together. We'll both benefit from it. Fantastic. Appreciate that, Silver. Much appreciate, my friend. I'll uh, drop you a message as soon as this finishes recording. And uh, I'll arrange to get my one sent out to you. So yeah, that's a good news story, right? That worked out really well. The power of the community. Awesome. Right. Couple to go. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so, I've got a note. Callum, as promised, here's my spare copy of Technos Arcade cartridge for the Evercade. Be warned, these things are a drug, as you'll have to full set before you know it. I've got 31 of the 53 carts currently, uh, after just a couple of weeks of collecting. Wow, Pete is not messing about. By the time you get this, I'll no doubt, you'll no doubt have more. Uh, keep up the fantastic work with the channel and filling out the 3.0. I think we're getting it's been full. Uh, your videos are a genuine highlight and have been a godsend during those early and late hours looking after our baby. Firstly, congratulations to you and thank you very much. Um, enjoy the game. P P.S. To turn on the other cage, you need to hold the power button down. Don't just press it. I thought my arm was faulty. It wasn't. Okay, fantastic. So very kind of you. Uh, he did reach out to me. He saw that I'd got the Evercade um, from Tony. Shout out to Tony. And uh, yeah, he sent me this Technos um, Arcade 1. Multi-cartridge. Some good games on here. Double Dragon 2, Double Dragon 3. 
Nice. This is actually my first uh, game. I've not been able to set up the uh, Evercade just yet. It's so busy. Uh, but yeah, sad. So that's got me on my way. And they know what they're doing, right? Because they number them. So it's number one. And uh, I just think they're really clever, aren't they? They know exactly what they're doing by numbering it. They know how to... Those collectors are easily manipulated. And uh, yeah, it just makes you want to have them all, right? So, um, I don't know. They might tread carefully into the world of Ever Cave. But right now, I've got enough on with uh, the various other things that I'm collecting. Okay, so this is from Ghetto Gang member Steve. I know, because his name's on the envelope. So shout out to Steve. What we got in here? Yeah, so Steve found me this. Um, I think this is just one pound, right? And um, just one of those games that I don't have. I don't think. I haven't got it ever. No, I don't have it. I've probably just looked at the picture that many times that I've convinced myself I do have it. Um, but that is Medieval Moves. Um, so from what I can see, it's one of the um, emotion games. But yeah, good one to find in person if you can. Like I say, with it just costing like one pound from CEX. And uh, yeah, man, I think that is everything. I think so. Let me just double check. There's no more parcels lying around. There's so much stuff in this room at the minute. It would be easy to miss one. Yeah. I mean, if you guys could see the state of this room. <laughs> Jeez. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, so massive shout out to Steve for that one. Much appreciated. And uh, this is the current PS3 Essentials pile that needs adding. And aside from all these, I think there's still about 20 uh, coming from various international sources, which I cannot wait for them to arrive and to show you guys because we've got some very rare games in that lot that have uh, just been able to not been able to get in the UK. Um, so yeah, absolutely fantastic. So right, I'm going to tidy up now and then we're going to look at what I picked up from Ikea and we're going to do some jobs in here. <sighs> okay, so Ikea purchase number one, a shelf for the smaller Billy bookcase. Uh, we've got this free space here now, so uh, yeah. Nice little bit of more room to play with. And I do have a larger shelf to go above the PS2 TV. Um, I just haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that yet. But yeah, any collector's best friend, right? A bit of empty shelf space. So I'm sure we'll take advantage of that very soon. Still admiring my Mega Drive sign. Uh, Ikea purchase number two. Something that's been months in the making. I bought a plant. Can you believe it? So I bought a succulent or succulents, plural. I don't know. I'm not a plant guy, I'll be honest with you. Not this kind of plan anyway. But right, let's get this position here in the 3.0. Um, I don't know where it's going, but I just thought it'd be nice, you know, a bit of something green in here. Hmm. Maybe there. Or there. Possibly there. Here. There. There. No, I think that's the perfect spot, right? In the window. Tucks in nicely in that corner. And, uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. That might be the first of many plants. We'll see how we get on. Final purchase from Ikea, a picture frame. Um, yeah, this is something else I've been thinking about doing for a long time. Uh, I'm very proud of what's going in here. So hopefully this is going to display well and we can find a nice spot for it. Okay, so I've got it all framed up, and uh, like I say, this is something I'm very proud of. It was very much uh, a collector goal of mine, and um, yeah, I think it's nice to sort of display that in physical form, and that is this copy right here of Retro Gamer Magazine. So this was a magazine that I was featured in. I was featured in the Collector's Corner, and I remember when I had a very small collection and never had even entered my mind to have a YouTube channel or anything, I used to look through Retro Gamer magazine and I'd always go straight to Collector's Corner. It was always the first thing I'd look at every time I got the magazine. And I remember often looking at it thinking, oh, I'd love to be in there. I'd love to be in it one day. And last year I got the opportunity to be in it. I've got both copies of the magazine. So the monthly subscription that you can have with Retro Gamer magazine 
They send a different cover on the two magazines, so the one you can get a standard copy in stores, as opposed to the one that they send by the monthly subscription in the post. On this occasion, there was very minor differences. It was just slightly cleaner, as you can see. So the monthly subscription one is just a cleaner cover, whereas this one's got more sort of writing and more text on it, but very similar uh, on this particular issue. If anybody is interested, if they want it or they want to take a look, it is 248, I think. I think it says 248. Um, so yeah, I'll quickly show you guys myself in here and um, there is an old vlog of me going into the WH Smiths near where I live and finding the magazine and yeah, it's quite surreal like picking it up off the shelf and seeing yourself in there but here I am, Collector's Corner. Yeah, just a great experience to be a part of and if anyone sort of ever wonders how this comes about then... Uh, it was like an email exchange with the editor, Darren. Shout out to Darren. I know he does watch the channel. And um, yeah, they basically send you a list of questions. You then sort of like reply via email and you send some photos and pictures and maybe some photos and pictures of the specific games and things that you're talking about. And I'm really happy with what they chose to show because it really does sort of highlight a lot of my favourite things. So we've got a link to the past, Thunder Force 4, uh, my Mario All-Stars, Def Jam Fight for New York. Um, yeah. Really, yeah, like I say, just a very proud feeling to have been featured in this magazine. And it's long overdue, I think, to get this shown in the room. And um, yeah, sometimes you almost forget this. I'm living this kind of crazy life where it's just non stop and you very rarely get time to reflect on past things. It's always about looking forward uh, or enjoying the now. But every now and again, it's nice to sort of look back and, um, you know, be content with some of the things you've achieved. And yeah, this is definitely one of those things that I I'm very happy about. And, um, in terms of collector's goals, right, this takes me nicely to the next point that I've probably achieved more through collecting than I could have ever imagined. I'd always wanted a full set, we did that with the Wii U. I'd always wanted a life-size figure, we got that. I always wanted a kiosk, I've had several. Uh, I always wanted like an old Nintendo sound, we've done that. I always wanted a room that I could be proud of and like that search for perfection and I'm very much in the midst of that. And yeah, it, like for me, it's just, yeah, I mean, it's not really any of those long-term goals, that's not the driver. For me, it's just the enjoyment now. The, the, this is a part of my life, part of who I am, hunting, collecting, enjoying, learning. Um, that's the key thing, right? Always learning about new games, um, experiencing playing them. And yeah, man, um, it's just a beautiful thing. And I wanted to touch uh, probably on last week's vlog and I forgot, but it seems uh, a good time now to tie it in. Viewers of the channel may remember last year, I said on one of the vlogs how in terms of like YouTube goals, that last year I uh, achieved two of the three goals that I set myself. Uh, and that was to, I think, hit a million views and to get to 10,000 subscribers. And um, thankfully, with the help of you guys, I was able to achieve that. But there was one other goal that I had that I've never mentioned because I don't like to write checks that I can't cash, right? And it was one of them goals which to some extent you can only influence to an amount, right? And that was to get a video that had 100,000 views. It was just one of the things that I'd always kind of, I would have liked to be able to get that six figure view total on a video. And we have managed to achieve that. And again, I say we because massive thanks to you guys for watching. And it does have a big impact. What you guys do in the regular viewership and how you interact with the video, the comments, the likes, the shares, the subscriptions, um, how long you watch the videos for, all that kind of thing. That is ultimately what ultimately prompts um, the YouTube algorithm, which I don't pretend to know anything about because who knows, right? Um, that's a beast of its own. Um, but that ultimately helps YouTube to then decide to push certain things more to a wider audience. And yeah, so massive thank you to you guys, but it just meant that that was another goal achieved. So yeah, I just thought whilst I'm taking this kind of moment to almost reflect, which isn't something that we do very often, um, looking back, yeah, I just wanted to take this time to say thank you for helping and We've had a lot of channel growth in recent weeks and genuinely it's down to you guys, so I appreciate it. But anyway, before I go off on too much of a tangent, let's find a home for this, right? I think it looks good as well. I was toying with getting a light grey one, but because everything's white in here, I just thought, yeah, make it about the, uh, the piece of artwork itself, right? So let's find a home. Okay, so I'm going to need everybody's help in housing this picture frame because Mrs. RG thinks it should go here. Now, obviously on the wall itself, right? And uh, I completely agree. It does look good there and there's the space there. My concern is that that's prime real estate. We could either potentially extend the Mega Drive out or 
a future large purchase, which, let's be honest, it's somewhat inevitable, it's going to happen eventually, right, could sit there. I wanted it to go here. I always envisaged it going sort of there on that space behind Master Chief. Now, Mrs. RG is not a fan of it going there because she says, oh, you can't see the whole image because Master Chief blocks it when you sort of walk into the room. And I get that, but from my sort of point of view is you can't see everything in the room anyway. And what I love about this room is everywhere you look, there's different angles, different things that you see from different positions. And yeah, you're never gonna be able to see everything. Uh, I think it's good there. But let me know in the comments, guys. You let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you're Team RG or Team Mrs. RG. And uh, yeah, we'll get this housed in the next week's vlog. But what I do know for sure is that we need to house all these new PS3 essentials. So let's let's crack on with that. Okay, so uh, as you can see, I had to clear this area here. Uh, so something else for next week's vlog, we'll rehome the Ultimate Trilogy Edition. Um, but I love the way that the Essentials now wraps around. I think it looks awesome. I think these are all in alphabetical order, but if you ever want to know, top tip, if you ever want to know if something is indeed in alphabetical order, post it on the internet and... Uh, <laughs> People will quickly tell you if it's wrong. So, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments uh, if anything's wrong. Uh, but, yeah, really happy with that. A um, little bit of room to grow still. Obviously, we'll turn WrestleMania Edition in uh, as I get more essentials because, uh, yeah, there's definitely going to be some more in the way. But as it stands right now, I love how that looks. And that is going to do it for this week's Ghetto Vlog. Another fantastic week, but... An unusual week in some ways, probably the least amount of games that I've found out and about on a vlog ever, and probably the most amount of games that I've added to my collection in one week ever. So yeah, I mean, I guess that's just the way that game chasing goes, right? It's been very much a PS3 Essentials heavy week in terms of both the Wednesday and the Sunday content, but fear not. I have got some real nice retro on order and that should form the basis of Wednesday's video. So make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're not already so you don't miss any of the content from myself. And also, I just want to say once again, if you would like to be in chance to win these fantastic prizes for an amazing cause at Alzheimer's Research UK, there'll be a link below to the Just Giving page. For every £5 that you donate to that fantastic charity, uh, you'll get an entry to win these great prizes. So yeah, give what you can down below and... Uh, yeah, once again, massive thank you to everybody that takes the time to watch, everybody that's watched thus long into the vlog. Um, I think I can probably say what I love to say around this time, right? That the game rooms never looked better. And uh, yeah, there's still loads more games on the way, so you can be sure of that on next week's vlog. And uh, if you would like to support the channel further, if you want to get involved with the Ghetto Gang, so you get exclusive access to behind-the-scenes stuff and, of course, the Discord, which, yeah... Um, the enablers, as I call them. <laughs> Massive shout out to the Ghetto Gang. Who, yeah, I wouldn't have anywhere near as many essentials if it wasn't for those guys. But yeah, if you want to join and get involved with the Ghetto Gang, the link will be in the description below. But thank you all so much for watching. I shall see you on Wednesday. Play your games. Keep it retro. In a bit. You're watching the Retro Getro. Ghetto. Ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back into the Retro Ghetto. Oh.